if we're still following the Simba story, right? I would say that you're now at the point where you're fully grown lion. <laughs> you, you, you're eating all, the, you got all the bugs around you, right? You're, you've got your best friends. Everything in life is going great, right? That's what it sounds like. You're, you know, you've reached this place. However, now we're going to move into a different part of your life where you decide to open the school, right? Which is in a sense, and I'll let you say this more, but it is your kind of going back, right? The same way that Simba went back to continue to, cause to help the world. It feels like this is now in your transition, right? So what are some of the influences that then led you to that transition of leading, of leaving what was, you know, completely cozy, you know, life is going great to now starting your own business, but not just starting a business, starting a school. The thing is, I think for those people who have the feeling in their heart that one day they might start a business, I think they're going to start a business because it's either you have it or not. If you have the little, little tiny fire here that's burning, you know, you want to do something different, that means that you're going to do it. So because uh, I was born in a business family, we were wealthy. I, I remember the old days, you know, how money can empower people. So I always wanted to do business, but I didn't want to open coding bootcamp. It was not a business idea for me. Uh, at, you know, when I was destroyed by life in America, the difficulties, you know, you don't think about starting a business. You think about how do I pay my rent? Uh, that's the number one goal in life, yeah. you know? So obviously you can't think about start a business at that time. So when I was starting working in IT, I, at that time, I think I accepted that the reality, I'm going to be a regular guy. I'm going to just work and make some money, take care of my family. If I can do that, maybe have a townhouse somewhere, you know, far away, which is cheaper. It's still good life in America versus what difficult, you know, life I had. So I was extremely grateful for the life that I have in IT. And uh, see, it was my blessing to start from the bottom of the society in the United States. I've met amazing people who is doing dishwasher, dishwashing, who is butcher, who is low income, doing some odd jobs. Like I know my colleagues from doing waiters. I know the car sales people. Like I remember people. I believe those people deserve better life. So when I started working in IT, after that, that bonus and after a few months, I got super comfortable. I was called for every important meeting for the software development and they would ask for my idea. You know, I was doing well and uh, I was probably the only person that didn't have computer science background in the team. And uh, as I get comfortable with working in IT, then I realize people working in IT can see, is, you know, when people that there is a general general uh, perception of IT is difficult, computer science for smart people, right? Bro, it's it's just too much. You think the guy's washing dishes in seven, I mean, in, in a restaurant, in the kitchen, he's stupid. No. You think the guy's working in 7-Eleven from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m., he's stupid? No. These are no, it's not like people working in IT, they're smarter, better than you. I mean, I've seen that, I've, I've lived there, I've attended meetings, I had colleagues. The reason they have better life is, I'm going to give you an analogy. Analogy. My grandfather was in Altai City mountains in East Turkestan, in China, occupied place by China. So he was gold miner, you know, I mean, the gold rush yeah, yeah. and like all the stuff. He was one of them. Uh, imagine you're a gold miner and you're looking for gold, you're digging the, the things and you're using the sophisticated equipment you work let's say 10 hours a day and you don't find gold. So what are you going to do? Obviously, you're not working hard enough. You have to work harder. So you talk to your wife. He's like, listen, wife, we're going to find a gold. Let's work, dig together. I do 10 hours. You do 10 hours means 20 hours. Let's add two more hours, make it like 24 hours a day. We, we, find, we try to find a gold and you don't find a gold. And uh, the reason is, first of all, I don't think these two people are stupid. Second, I don't think they're, work, they're not working hard enough. The reason they don't find gold is there's no gold in there. So I, I believe, you know, people working in 7-Eleven, working in core cells, working in, the, in, in, in some odd jobs, they work so hard in some industries that have no demand. In, uh, you know, economies, supply and demand. And uh, I think at some point, these people were lucky enough in IT to make the decision to study computer science. 
And that's why they end up in the right place, which is where there's gold. And people learn history, got PhD on, I don't know, like a Egypt, whatever, pyramid. <laughs> So, yes, it is interesting, right? It's not like I'm looking down on those jobs, but it is interesting to talk about pharaohs. But, you know, in today's economy, like, what are you going to do? Like, what is, the market? Is, what is the market for that? Who's going to pay a PhD in history? I've seen so many PhDs with sophisticated background making no money. It's literally like where you are, like, are you in the right place or not? So my thing is, okay, these people are not smarter than the people that I used to know, like previously Kuzat. And I want to help people to get into IT. So in the beginning, it was not about um, starting a business. It was like literally I felt bad for people. So I would convince them to study coding. So I remember uh, there was somebody from Panera Bread I was buying. I just looked at her. I looked. I, I felt like it was myself a few years ago working so hard trying to survive. I go to a restaurant. I have a decent dinner. I see this great guy with a great attitude, the Vader. And it was like, this guy is so good. His soft skill is so good. He, he, he's the way of communication, amazing. I mean, this guy's going to kill it when he's in IT, right? She's like, hey, bro, listen, I'm going to give you a good tip, but you, I want you to listen to me. Like, just explain, you know, how he, why she, she, she should get into IT. So it's a free kind of introduction pitch for them to get into IT. It's not because I want to make money. I see myself struggling in them. I didn't want them to struggle like me where your son is dying and you have no money to take him to the hospital. That was like like that. So I worked for multiple companies in, in, in tech. And at some point, I was just helping people in the community. And at some point, I would get phone call. Like, hey, you know, how do I say in this interview, they were asking these questions. How do I do that? Can you take a look at my resume, all this stuff? Can you give me a tutoring session, mentoring session in the weekends? So they would book a room in library. So I would go there, teach for free. And uh, I think it was 2015, the guy who is in my community, he's like, who's that? You know, I got an offer. I was like, great, congratulations. He was like, thank you. I was like, I was like thank what? He said, remember that we had a conversation he was asking me an interview questions and he said, I recorded that conversation. I think he had an iPhone or something at that time. I recorded the conversation, a typed transcript in a Word document. I memorized your answer. I passed the interview. <laughs> that time... In Turkish, it's called jeton <laughs> düştü. I don't know if people, it was like interesting. At that time that you realize, ching, you know, maybe you have an idea, right? Yeah. So I was like, maybe we should start a, I should start a business. And uh, at that time, I have this uh, colleague in Fannie Mae. His name is Muradil. He's a guy from Uzbekistan. Obviously, I mean, I told you guys like Uzbek and Uyghur are very similar people. In that his grandfather was Uyghur too. One day I was, he was speaking Russian talking about job or something on the phone. I was like, what are you doing, bro? He's like, you know, I'm helping my friend. He's a limousine driver. He, he needs, I'm helping him to find IT job. I was like, I do this thing too. So we started walking and it's like, hey, do you want to start a business with me? So we, we had this conversation. We were walking around Fannie Mae for 45 minutes and we had this initial idea of starting a business, right? And uh, because that time the demand was pretty high, people were just calling us to like organically develop a few years because we help people. I think we together we invested like $800 or something. Mm -hmm. We created, a, we were thinking about the company name. I went to Fiverr, I paid a lady $20. She came up with 20 different names, generated uh, Alpha Rocks um, Info Fusion. I was like, <laughs> so, the names were so dumb. <laughs> and uh, I didn't like none of them. It was in front of a masala walk. It was a restaurant. Me, we were, it was in a lunch break. I looked at Muradil, I was like, hey, bro, what about cyber tech? Then I, I went to the office, we checked from this registry, whatever, corporate, whatever, from Virginia. It was, the name was available. So we registered LLC, cyber tech LLC. And then we had a friend who has a, a construction company in Tyson's Corner. And uh, he had the, this conference room that he wouldn't use on the weekend and at nights. So I went to meet him. I was like, hey, bro, listen, you're, you're not using this anyway. Can I pay you a thousand dollars at night and weekends? He was like, I mean, of course, like a thousand dollars was a good deal. So I rented his office. Obviously, our office was in Tyson's Corner. So that time we were, we had a conversation. Maybe we can big, get a bigger place in Manassas. Every time I go to Manassas, I, I have to drive through this road with all the tire shops, oil change. I was like, maybe it's not a 
good business place to start, like location is important, you know, in where in Tyson's Corner you have, you know, USA Today, you have all this um, Capital One, all these big companies. I was like, it's a good association. So that was like a dumb, straightforward idea that we wanted to start from that office. So we rented the office and uh, I paid a $5 to Fiverr to come up with this, you know, if you want to change your life, call this email, send email, we'll call this number. I put my cell phone number in there. <laughs> so people start calling me. I know it's one of the first guys now, he's our director of, is that he, is he director? I don't know. He's not director, I think. He's manager of uh, IT portfolio or something. Irfan. Yeah. Right. The guy called me. He's like, hey, um, I see this ad on Facebook to learn coding. Um, where's your office? I was like, Panera. <laughs> <laughs> because like it was a weekday, so I yeah. cannot use the office. So he came to Panera Bread in Herndon. So sitting outside, I was pitching him how he can change his life. And uh, at the end, I show him my pay stuff. The guy was a mechanic. I want to do this. <laughs> I want to do this, right? So that is like one by one. I had to convince people in either uh, Starbucks or Panera to recruit them. So we started with 17 people, I guess. Like Murad did a little bit from the Uzbek community, you know, Russian speaking community. I did to some Uyghurs and, you know, other uh, Turkish people. So we started with 17 students, I believe, in 2015. And now uh, we do have more than 300 employees, uh, 34 countries that we have we're serving. And uh, I think it's a great journey. Uh, uh, now, I really want to give credit to my co-founder, Muradil. I think, you know, you cannot imagine how important it is to have a good co-founder. And he is just a, a great uh, person, extremely supportive. If we were fighting from the beginning, if he was like, as soon as we start making a little bit of money, he was giving a problem, I don't think we would have this business today. Mm -hmm. But also, I think his technical part really helped. This guy's amazing genius. So he supported from technical part. I was like more business marketing and business development. So like our combination was really took off. That's how we started Cybertech. Now today, Cydio. We can talk about why it's Cydio later. Yeah. yeah. And thus Cybertech was born, right? Yes. Yeah. All right. So thank you so much for your time today, Kuza. Thank you all for uh, watching and listening in. Uh, future chats will be more into the building of Cybertech and then the transformation from that to Sadio, along with some other great stuff. So thank you again for your time, Kuzat. Thank you all as well. Thank you so much. You are such a great host, man. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.